So what does this find behind me have to do with my favorite 1960s Disney movie? If you're curious to find out, stay tuned. folks to another episode of Growing Some Louisiana History with me, David Hubble, and this week we have a very interesting and fun to say vegetable growing in the garden today. It's called the gagutz or gagutza, or spelled gagutza. It's an Italian uh, or Sicilian influenced vegetable that has arrived in Louisiana over a hundred years ago, and I'm going to show you how it's doing in my garden. Well, before we start, as always, I'd like to take the time to thank everybody who's already subscribed to the David J. Hubble YouTube channel. I appreciate your support, and hopefully the information here is useful to you and at least interesting. So thanks for watching. So we know in the late 1890s, there was a big influx of Sicilian and Italian immigration into South Louisiana, as well as North Louisiana and Arkansas. And along that trail, you'll find the Gagutza. So the history of the Gugutza in South Louisiana goes back easily back to the 1890s with the Sicilian immigration uh, when you had a big influx of Sicilian and Italian immigrants coming to Louisiana as well as uh, the northern part of the state and Arkansas. Um, with them they brought, like we talked about earlier, the, the beautiful green eggplant, but in addition they brought something else, these long Italian squash as they were oftentimes called, Gugutz, and they're gourd, and they've got a white meat and they've got a lot of seeds that are edible in there, um, but it's a sweet white meat and these particular squash, as they're called, uh, are likened in many ways to zucchini. So they're grown on vines that grow 50 to 80 feet long and these particular squash are pretty long themselves. In fact, they're also called baseball bat squash or bat squash and they hang down and if you get them up uh, at high enough levels you can grow them from three to four foot. In fact it's been reported that they will grow 10 inches a day. So um, one vine will definitely feed a small family for uh, several weeks. Once you harvest the squash they actually will last for a couple of weeks as well. The skin may get a little brown. Um, they're light green in color, at least the variety I've got. And um, the skin tends to get a little bit tougher the, uh, the older they get. Uh, which just makes them a little more difficult to peel. Also you find the seeds inside of them a lot tougher to eat as well. But they're very versatile. Um, you can cut them up. A lot of people will take them and mix them with tomatoes. Uh, then they will saute them kind of as a stew with some Parmesan cheese on top. Others will actually put them into a soup. Um, I found a couple of good recipes for casseroles where you mix them up, you cut them up, you mix them with tomatoes and ground beef or tomatoes and Italian sausage and mix and cook them together into this wonderful delicious casserole. Um, so they're very versatile. I've made pickles with them which has been a favorite of some of my co-workers. Uh, I've also made uh, gugutsa bread with them much like zucchini bread. Uh, if you're familiar with the New Orleans old famous uh, Sicilian jazz artist Louis Prima, he had a song that came out around 1959 called My Gugutsa and uh, it was about well it was about his love for a sweetheart and he called her his gugutsa. But in it he has a line and it says, they grow it back in Italy, they love it on the farm. It's kind of like zucchini flavored with Italian charm. So that's kind of a pretty good idea of what a gugutsa or gugutsa tastes like. So you'll see what I got out in the garden. The seeds I'm growing I got from the largest gugutsa farm in North, North Louisiana and probably in the United States. It's the Chris Cordora farms up there in Ruston. So this is kind of North Louisiana for me to get my seeds. Uh, they usually grow from June, I plant mine in May, and they start flowering. They have white flowers, long white flowers, male and female, like you see on the Melaton and other squash. And they put on these little green, they kind of look like a little bit of a worm, and then over time, matter of days in fact, they grow pretty long. Kind of a sad story, when my dad was uh, on his deathbed, uh, I was the first year I grew them and they had grown up into some of the uh, my bay tree and I had to go help my mom and my dad during those that time and when I got back to the house uh, I knew I had a few small ones they looked like little you know little snakes if you will but I, it was, I was gone 10 days and when I got back I had these six large gogutsas hanging down from this bay tree and they were like four foot long they were immense and it was just an amazing thing to see so I ended up with 14 off that first vine and typically for the ones that I've got from the Cordora farms, those seeds uh, 
they'll produce anywhere from three to four feet is about the best time to pick them. Uh, I prefer them around three, two and a half to three because the skin's a little softer and the seeds aren't as tough. Um, plus, like I said, one of them you can make all kind of meals with. I mean, they're just a four foot long baseball bat looking uh, vegetable is pretty impressive. In fact, when you bring it to your friends to share, you know, if they've never seen one before, the eyes will light up as you can imagine. Um, in fact, after uh, my dad's funeral, we ended up giving some to family members and I was giving them away because like I said, one with a family of four was more than enough. And I will include as much information as I can on you to find out how to get Mr. Kodora's seeds if they're still available. His website hadn't been up as much recently, but you still may be able to get his seeds. He's been doing this for, since 1992. And so you're looking at the 31st year of production of his seeds, and I'm sure his family's going to keep it up because it's a great tradition. Um, but I'm lucky enough to keep my seeds and keep them going. And hopefully this year, uh, in about a month or so, I'll be showing you some pictures on my Facebook page of the Gugutsas. So the other thing I wanted to add with the uh, Kodoro seeds is that if you go back to the articles, and the old newspapers, you really don't see them listed too much um, until maybe around the 1950s. But uh, in this particular case, the seeds that I got from Chris Cadora and his farm, he notes that back in 1992 that he had been growing them from seeds that his grandfather brought over from Sicily back in the 1890s. So we know that he and his family have kept that tradition up for over 100 years. In fact, so this is 130 years strong. So this has been in our Louisiana diets for at least that long. In addition to the Ruston area, you'll also find in Independence, Louisiana, uh, which is a North Shore around Tickfaw and just north of Hammond, there's also a big strong uh, Italian community, which I believe was also involved with a lot of the uh, strawberry harvesting. Anyway, they also have had a tendency to uh, enjoy growing these and eating these. So uh, depending on what kind of variety you get, um, it's a big part of our heritage, uh, whether you're Italian, Sicilian or not. According to Ancestry and 23 Me, I don't have a lot in my uh, direct line, but I do have some cousins and aunts that are of Sicilian and Italian descent. So uh, this is a great way to learn about another culture and continue to grow these seeds that have uh, helped really add to the, uh, the diversity of our wonderful flavors from South Louisiana. Let's go check out what I've got in the garden so far. So this, folks, is the Gugutz, Gugusa, Kukuza, however you say it, but I think the proper Sicilian, Italian, or Italian-American way is the Gugutz or Gugutza. The connection between my favorite Disney movie from the 1960s is through Louis Prima, who played King Louis in Jungle Book, because he had a song that came out in 1959 called My Gugutza. And um, I think it's probably the only song on the Gugutsa or the Kukuza. But in his particular case, uh, he likens his sweetheart, who at the time was Keely Smith, his wife's Keely Smith, to uh, Gugutsa, and he called her that. Um, of course, maybe because she's tall and skinny. But anyway, right now, you see some flower buds right here. Um, once again, these have male and female flowers. I've seen a few male flowers, but I have yet to see any females. I do have some footage from the past where I can show you uh, them growing. And the harvested product. But uh, you can see it's very expansive. Um, much like the Meliton, it grows and grows and grows. In fact, it grew into this bay tree the first few years. And I'm kind of hoping to do that again, much to my wife's chagrin, because uh, what you want it to do is grow up enough so that the flowers can hang down and you can get a nice straight uh, squash. Um, like I said, one vine alone, at least the, this variety from the Cordura Gugutsas, will put on, at least for me, 14, 13 to 14. Um, a lot of people I see in New Orleans have built some nice trellises for theirs, uh, so that's always a good possibility you may want to do. Much like if you go back to my Melitol episode, you'll see how I have my Melitol trellis. You can do the same here with the Gugutsa. Uh, in this particular case, you know, these things you plant once a year uh, from seed, and they get pretty expansive, whereas the uh, Melitol perennial come back year after year. 
Um, what I tend to do is save the seeds, save one of them, let it dry out. Uh, it kind of almost becomes like a rain stick between uh, how large it is. And there's an immense amount of seeds. And I'll also show you what some of the seeds look like in a minute. Um, but not all of them seem to be viable. Some of them, mine have been kind of uh, flat or hollow. But they'll tend to, uh, I'll tend to, you know, pick through which ones that seem like they'll make the best. Sometimes they talk about maybe shaving off the end with a, or filing off the end with a emery board and planting it. But uh, you kind of plant it. I always start them in pots so that uh, I can make sure that they're growing and then I'll just let them go. Uh, I know I had one coworker I gave some to and he had some great success with his. And uh, he, I think he actually kept going all the way through the winter time, whereas mine kind of petered off around late September. Um, hopefully this year with more sunlight due to the trees being cleared, I will have a better idea. So I'm still at least about a month away, I think, from seeing any. So I will, uh, maybe I'll do a part two, a uh, short one, just to kind of update everybody. So that's what we got so far. That's the kagutsa, the kagutsa. Oh, you should also know that the term has a slang for, um, you know, if you want to call it a big dumb person. Uh, the comment that I read online was that uh, a gugutz could be somebody like, you know, likened to a squash that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and sits there. So if you got somebody who just sits there and sits there, uh, and or if somebody calls you a gugutz, you may want to check out whether it's been done in a loving term or is an insult because it may mean that you're just sitting there and you're, uh, as we say in the Cajun French, a pate. Uh, you just sit there and not contribute in anything. Now, it may also have some other connotations for certain male body parts, but I won't get into that. But anyway, just being said, you see what they look like, use your imagination or don't. Anyway, so if this information has been helpful to you, please consider sharing it with all your Gugutsa loving friends, our squash loving friends. Um, these are a great thing to add to your southern garden. Uh, unlike regular crookneck squash or uh, zucchini even, uh, these aren't as uh, susceptible to the squash vine borer. So you can plant these a little later. You can, In fact, you can grow squash pretty much all year. I mean, if you start early with your uh, crooknecks and your zucchinis, you could probably start from February till May. Get these in the ground around May. Um, although I have seen some varieties that people are picking as early as late May and June. So there may be another variety of kagoots out there that uh, actually produces earlier than the one I've got. Um, and then you get these planted, you start harvesting in August, and they'll last you a couple of months. And then if your melitons come in, well then you've got a whole other variety from like October on. So you could be eating a variety of squash throughout the year. So you really need to be growing these in your yard. But anyway, if this information has been helpful, please consider sharing it with your Gugutsa loving friends on, on your favorite social media sites. Also, if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing to the David J. Hubble YouTube channel and also click that bell to be alerted to all upcoming videos. Hopefully I'll do some cooking with some Gugutsas a little bit later this year. So if you have any questions, please uh, send them to me at rpkjin 2 r at gmail.com and or leave them in the comment section below. Tell me if you've been growing gugutsas and what's your experience and your favorite way to eat them. Anyway, I appreciate it and I will see you next week.